Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here in New York City for the launch of the Samsung Galaxy S8. The first thing that jumps out to me is the display. So Samsung already had a curved edge on the S6 as well as the S7, but here with the S8, they've really pared down the top and bottom of the bezels. On the bottom, instead of having standard physical keys with a fingerprint sensor, instead you now have Android soft keys. Now that's not exactly anything new, most Android phones have already been doing this for quite a while, but what is kind of interesting is that the home button actually has some taptic feedback. So when you press it, you actually feel the phone vibrate, a little bit like force touch. Up top, everything has been crammed into the tiny bezels. So not only do you have an upgraded front-facing camera, but you also have all of the sensors up here, including the new iris scanner. Now this was originally launched with the Galaxy Note 7, and we all know how well that went, but it is a nice additional feature to be able to use not only iris scanning, but as well as facial recognition to be able to unlock your phone. It's not going to be as secure as something like a password or fingerprint, but it is an option. With those smaller bezels though, comes a very weirdly shaped screen. So the resolution is 2960 by 1440, and what that means is the screen is very, very tall, much more so than a traditional smartphone. So in most apps, it's not a big deal. For example, when you're watching a YouTube video, all you'll see is just a few black bars on the left and right. But I think some apps are still going to need to be updated to support this sort of weird screen resolution, and we've seen the same issue with the LG G6. But when you're holding it in the hand, it does give you extra screen real estate. The screens are the big difference between the S8 and the S8 Plus. So the standard model has a 5.8 inch display, where the Plus bumps that up to 6.2. Now these are huge displays, but because they have such small bezels, the phones themselves are actually not that bad. So for example, while the S8 is a little bit bigger than something like an iPhone 7, the Plus is almost the exact same size as the iPhone 7 Plus. It's a little bit taller, not quite so wide. Considering that you're getting a much larger display, it actually looks pretty good. The screens themselves look great, and you have some cool features like HDR support, but the real star of the show here is absolutely how big of a screen they were able to fit in such a small phone. Take a look around the rest of the Galaxy S8, and you'll see it kind of looks a lot like the S7. So one of the big changes is that the fingerprint sensor has been moved to the back of the phone. Now this is not exactly a bad idea, I especially like phones like the Pixel which put it right in the middle, but because the S8 puts it right beside the camera, it's a little bit awkward to get to. Not exactly a big deal, but expect a lot of fingerprints on your camera. Speaking of cameras, the Galaxy S8 has the exact same one from the S7. Now that's not a huge disappointment, as the S7 had one of the best cameras when it came out last year, but that was last year, and this year there were phones like the iPhone and Pixel which absolutely compete with it. To be fair, Samsung does have some interesting things going on with software this year. So for example, it's constantly taking multiple shots and sort of merging them to create a better shot like the Pixel does. But the fact remains that this is not going to be a huge camera upgrade. And we just got kicked out because we were filming fast when the event was over. But no big deal because there's more to talk about with the Galaxy S8. One of the big announcements was Bixby. Now this is a virtual assistant, very similar to something like Siri or Cortana or especially Google Assistant. What it will do is the standard voice stuff for searching. It has a list of cards for all the different activities you have throughout the day. But what's a little bit more interesting is it has a dedicated Bixby button, which will pull up all of that stuff, but you can also use the camera to scan things. Now, of course, like the infamous, hugely popular Amazon Fire Phone, you can use this to scan products and buy them in real time, because, you know, that worked out really well last time. Also, I'm kind of salty that they kicked us out. Something a little bit more interesting is Dex. Now, this is similar to the Windows Phone Continuum feature, in that if you drop the Galaxy S8 on a dock and connect to mouse, keyboard, and monitor, it turns into a computer. Sort of. This essentially is running Android apps and a Windows desktop. So you can think of it as sort of a weird hybrid, I guess. I mean, sure, it's going to be nice to say edit a PowerPoint on a display with a mouse and keyboard versus on your phone, but I'm curious to see how many apps are actually really going to take advantage of a bigger screen or even going to be useful there. Powering the Galaxy S8 is either a Snapdragon 835 or Samsung Exynos OctaCore processor. Now what's interesting about these is that they're both based on the brand new 10 nanometer process. Now Samsung loved talking about this on stage, and essentially what it means is that the chips are going to be smaller and either provide more performance, which they do by like 10 to 20%, but more importantly they're going to help save battery, and that's important. After the disaster that was the Note 7 with its exploding batteries, Samsung definitely was a little bit conservative this year. So the S7 has a 3000 mAh battery, and the Plus has 3500. Now that's about what you would find on the S7, but the difference is the new phones have much larger displays. So yes, that processor should be more power efficient, but those displays are definitely gonna suck up a lot of juice. So we'll see how battery life actually stacks up. Thankfully, we have a lot of the good features from the Galaxy S7. So there's still water resistance with IP68 certification. So if you wanna go swimming with your Galaxy S8, you can. It also still has both a USB-C as well as a headphone jack, which is awesome because you know, why wouldn't you not have that on a smartphone in 2017? The Galaxy S8 will be available for pre-order starting tomorrow, and it will be on sale on April 21st in the US. So I'm curious, what do you guys think about the Galaxy S8? 
For me, I think it would be nice if it had a better camera and some less gimmicky features, but that design really does go a long way. But definitely be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.